Hi. What I want to do is think about how the energy levels that can be experienced in the deep ocean environment can be affected by a turbidity flow. And then what impact that's going to have on the turbidite deposits that will be laid down as a result. What I've done here is I've plotted the axes of a graph. I've got time on my vertical axis and I've got energy of the flow on my horizontal axis. Notice there are no numbers on this. All I want to do with this is to illustrate an idea. Okay. If we think about the deep ocean environment where we find turbidity currents occurring, generally that's a very low energy environment. A turbidity flow is an anomaly in that type of environment. So, generally, the energy levels are going to be very low until a turbidity flow occurs. Now, the fastest part of a turbidity flow, fairly obviously, is going to be right at its front. So, the energy level, immediately, a turbidity flow passes a particular point in the deep ocean environment, is going to jump to a very high level. Once the fastest part of the flow has passed our point, though, the bits of the flow behind it, inevitably, are going to be slower. Therefore, they're going to have less energy. So what we see over time is that energy level dropping until eventually, as the turbidity flow has passed, the energy level will go back to the normal low energy environment that we'd expect in a deep ocean environment. So this energy profile for one turbidity flow can show us the type of processes that may be occurring. Let's think about what they are. The normal deposition that we find in a deep ocean environment be very fine. Uh, typically a, a black mud. When we see that sudden jump though in energy level, we'll have a period of time where we have erosion occurring. As the energy level load continues to drop, if we think about how the Hillstrom curve works, we'll enter then a period of deposition. That deposition, though, where we have high energy, will be coarse, as that energy drops, it will become finer. And so we go back to our background deposition, our normal deposition of this very, very fine grained mud. So this energy profile shows us how a boomer sequence gets deposited. At the base of the sequence, this period of erosion gives our erosive surface at the base of the boomer sequence, possibly with fluke casts, uh, groove casts and other erosive features. The deposition then that will occur as the velocity of the flow decreases changes in grain size. So we get the di very distinctive graded bed within uh, a typical boomer sequence. Until eventually we end up back where we started with the very fine grain material. Until of course the next turbidity flow comes along and repeats the process again giving us the distinctive feature of a turbidite deposit of this cyclic deposition.